And you were just listening to Jim from uh, hosting Reasonably Music here on Fridays at the station. And uh, now you are on WMPG Radio from the University of Southern Maine, WMPG Gorham, Portland. Live from the Orion Cygnus arm of the Milky Way galaxy, this is Scientifically Speaking, a weekly half-hour program devoted to elegant curiosities, and I am one of your hosts, Sarah Chang, and joining me as always is DJ Star Watcher, Bernie Rhyme. How are you? Yes, hi Sarah, very good, thank you. Bernie's our professor of the Astronomy Lab here at USM and our local protector of the night skies. Reach out to us at WMPG Scientifically Speaking at gmail.com or on Instagram at WMPG Science. And you can call in today, 207-780-4909, if you've got any questions, if you want to share your experience with the uh, recent total solar eclipse here in Maine, New England, or beyond. And if you head over to WMPG.org, you can find the last five weeks of archives of all of your favorite shows, including this one. Bernie, could you let our listeners know what is up in the night sky for this coming week? Okay, certainly. So today is Friday, April 12th, a few days after the eclipse. Of course, we'll be covering that later. So uh, we have a waxing crescent moon. The eclipse, of course, has to be the new moon. I was lucky enough to see the very thin crescent moon uh, Tuesday night after the eclipse when it was still clear. And it was kind of neat to see how that was moving with Jupiter and the planets and the other things. You could see it all just became so much more clear and obvious when you can see it like the night after the eclipse too. So uh, planets, of course, evening would be Jupiter. So anything you saw to the right of the sun during the eclipse, those would be morning planets. The only one that was obvious enough was Venus. Mm -hmm. But then Saturn and Mars are morning planets, and those all would have been to the right or before the sun, which makes sense. And Jupiter was to the left or after the sun, and that's that's the evening planet. So uh, the days are getting longer, over 13 hours. So sunrise at 6.03, sunset at 7.20. And um, there is a meteor shower in about 10 more days. That's called the Lyrids. That's on April 22nd, Earth Day. So that's a nice little meteor shower. Nothing like Geminids or the Perseids, but still pretty good. The first really good shower of the year. Um, So that's coming up there. And that's about it just for that. Uh, So that's what's going on this week. Awesome. Yep. Thank you, Bernie. Sure. And if you couldn't take notes fast enough, you can also check out the monthly What's Up column in the Portland Press Herald. Well, um, welcome to another episode of Scientifically Speaking. We are still experiencing, I don't know about you, (laughs) Bernie, but I'm still experiencing my post-eclipse high. (laughs) Um, I haven't gotten to my post-eclipse depression yet. Oh, good. Yeah, don't. Yeah. (laughs) Um, But definitely still high. And I Mm -hmm. think I do speak for both of us that we are both full of joy, ecstasy, Um, mm-hmm. rapture, just like pure <laughs> bliss and like mm-hmm. just yeah. the blessings from the celestial objects in our sky. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, Bernie, yeah. tell us about your yeah. experience. Yeah, that, that's a good way to put it. I'm glad too that you saw that that first one and now this would be our second one. And they're all so different. So obviously, obviously it's worth to see as many as you can possibly get to. Okay, well, in my case, of course, uh, I might have mentioned last time I had all the flights and things planned for Dallas because it was supposed to be so much better. Uh, I turned up. My friends did see it. They had to run up into Arkansas and stuff, so I'm happy for them. But so I canceled all that, and we found an Airbnb, which I was surprised, in the Bethel region. There was one left that wasn't 10 times the usual value. So we got lucky we didn't have to get there that same day and rush back that same night and meet all the traffic. So we got all that set up. And then we went to Rangeley. Uh, we could have gone a little further north because we had time. So um, so a person, because I'd, I'd been there, you know, I was skiing a saddleback when I was going to college at Orono, but I wasn't that familiar with Rangeley Lakes. Uh, so a person told us to go to Height of the Land. Which I'd never even heard of, but I guess it's one of the best views in all of Maine. That's a terrible spot, though, with all the traffic. Well, yeah, well, <laughs> we'll get to that later. It wasn't, it wasn't that bad at all. So we scouted out. We had the, we had the day before, and uh, so we scouted out, and they were saying the road closures and 20,000 people. It would be a nightmare. People were already camping up there. There's three different overlooks, so we were just, you know, we didn't know it would have thrown everything off. Yeah. So we just got there really early of the day of the eclipse. We yep. got there at eight, you know, yep. eight and a half hours. People were already there. The entire overlook was filled. Yeah. And so we started parking on the road, 
And that was fine. Eventually, five miles worth of cars in the road. <laughs> oh, no. So we hung out the entire day, which was great. I mean, there were so many stories. There were people, even one of my students was exactly, two of my students were exactly at that same spot. Wow. And the, the Weather Channel was there broadcasting live the whole day. Tons of drones and people and dogs and animals and campers and, you know, the mu- musicians, artists. You know, it was just a whole day long with one of the greatest views in all of Maine. Yeah. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah. And that's before the eclipse even started. Um, Bernie, I think we have a caller. <laughs> yeah. uh, can you hear us at all? Yes, I can. All right. All right. Yeah, um, hear you. Do you want to just briefly tell us your name and where you're calling from? Yeah. Uh, my name is Paul Cormier, and I'm calling from Randolph, New Hampshire. Awesome. Oh. And uh, he has a question. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Uh, all right. The eclipse... As we watched the eclipse, the eclipse trajectory, I guess, kind of went from bottom right to top left. Yep, that's right. Which is, I kind of expected it to be going straight across from left to right. No, the moon's always moving eastward at its own width every hour. So it's going to be moving to the east. So it's going to go from right to left, depending on how your view was, where you were uh, placed. But it was in more vertical fashion, too. Uh, um, I that, thought that was odd. Well, that's true because that's based on your latitude, the height of the sun. There's so many other factors involving exactly how it's going to go across. It won't be just straight right to left. But the moon's always moving huh. eastward. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That was my question. <laughs> okay, good. I Thanks. You guys. Thank you okay, so much. Great. Yeah, okay, good. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, thank you to Paul for calling in. Yeah. And uh, again, any questions, 207 780 And Bernie, I've got some questions that came up yeah. on the road. Oh, okay. um, but uh, yeah. so you, you saw it from Rangeley at Height yeah. of the Land. Yep. Um, that is a magnificent spot. Yep. It was my first thought when I thought, okay, where am yeah, I going to go? Yeah, because it's closer than where you went. Yes. But yeah. then I decided mm-hmm. Rangeley is very well known. Oh, yeah. Um, it was packed. Yeah, all the ski mountains. I think Sugarloaf, Saddleback. They were open. Yeah, yeah. Saddleback. I heard that uh, mm-hmm. they had a really bad year financially, mm-hmm. and in that one day, they made up a quarter of their losses. All right. <laughs> and King and Sugarloaf too. Some of my yes. friends were snowboarding on Sugarloaf, and yeah, they, they, yeah. they had live music, and they yes. stayed open, and people could just he just use a cell phone from the very peak. So terrific views. Yeah, they made up a lot of money oh, that day. Yeah. Um, I know there was like a big party on Sugarloaf. Yep. So lots and lots of people. Um, Jackman yeah. was was also kind of near there. I was mm-hmm. on my radar, but I was yeah. worried about, you know, single lane roads. and. Yeah, I think Jackman had some yeah. closures. Even yep. Holton had some closures. Yeah. So yeah. I, um, one of my friends lives in Old Town, mm-hmm. and she was like, I'm going wherever you're going. Okay. Probably. Okay. Well, um, and I had my mom with me, and her yeah. mom was there too, and so mm-hmm. you know we couldn't do a lot of hiking, which was my original plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyways, we ended up going up to Patton Sherman area, mm-hmm. um, overlooking Katahdin. So again, it was like a little overlook parking area, um, yeah. and it was just beautiful rural fields. There was like the Amish were riding it around their carriages. It was oh, the yeah. cutest thing. They tried to sell my mom a rocking chair. Oh, of course. It was Gotta adorable. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we we were going to leave early and ended up getting there and hung out, picnicked, mm-hmm. flew kites. It was the most mm. magnificent yeah. thing ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kites. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and Amish. I knew there was an Amish community. I thought they were further up towards Presque Isle. Yeah. Like Fairfield. Um, Fair I think something. all over. But um, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. oh, I think there was a caller. Please try to call in again. Oh, uh, I just missed your call. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, seven eight zero four nine zero nine, And yeah. ask us anything about what you saw that you were, like, wondering what that was. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, Brittany, yeah. you know, my first time in Illinois, yeah. I was just in a park. Didn't, yeah. you know, it was just totally different. Just yeah. totally different. Yeah, mine too. I mean, the thing that the, my big surprise was it was so much darker the first time. I mean, it literally, I couldn't see any of my camera settings the oh, first time. Uh, the shadow, for some reason, was more obvious, even though this time I had much better view. I, had a, I probably had a 40-mile view. I was up at 1,700 feet. So the, uh, the whole sunset-type thing was unfolding slower, and but it just didn't get really dark. I mean, yeah. there was no comet. Yeah. There, I was expecting like 100 stars. I probably saw three stars instead of 100 of them. 
but all the other things are so different. And you know, with the Amish and the rocking oh, chair yeah. and the, oh, yeah. the people. Last time I was only with twenty people. Now I was with five thousand people. Yeah, well, huge. You difference. had a lot. You had a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we got another caller. Um, yes. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Awesome. Do you want yeah. to introduce yourself and where you're calling from? Yeah, my name is Bumper White. I live in Pittsburgh, and in my USM faculty emeritus. Oh well. Mm. Welcome back on the airwaves <laughs> yeah. to USM. <laughs> yeah. um, what yeah. is your question? So, uh, in terms of totality, is the time going to totality the exact same as leaving totality? Uh, generally, yes, except some angles are changing a little bit. Because... Um, a friend of mine up in Rangeley, he had all the times printed, and it wasn't exactly symmetrical. Mm. For us, it started at 217, totality was 328, and it was over, uh, it wasn't the same amount after totality. So I guess if everything was even and it happened exactly at noon, it would be exactly symmetrical. Mm -hmm. But it was like 329 for the peak. Mm -hmm. So a little different because speeds and angles change a little bit, but very similar, yeah. 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 yeah, and it was different. Okay, okay, well, thank you very much. Oh, yeah, you're Absolutely. welcome. Absolutely. Thank you for calling. Yeah. Yeah, um, that was bye. surprised. Bye. Yeah. The, the angle exactly that it came into, because seeing the sun all day before, that was huge. I mean, last time we went out 20 minutes before it started, because, you know, we, we had, didn't have to stake out a claim. So the sun, you know, in the east, we got there after just after sunrise. Mm -hmm. So I saw how everything was going to move toward the east, but I didn't expect that lower right going to the top left. And the exact timings, I'm glad my friend had all written out. Bailey's beads, which I didn't see. But I did see shadow bands last, this time. Yeah. So that was pretty neat. Oh, man. Yeah. There's so many things to look for. Yeah. And <laughs> I I feel mm. like I still mm -hmm. didn't catch everything. Oh, no. You're you not going in three or three yeah. and a half. Maybe six or seven minutes. Yeah. And, like, you just, <laughs> you want to keep your eyes on it. Yeah. You know, this dark thing in the sky. Yeah, the black hole just, in the sky. Yeah. and <laughs> um, But, yeah, and this was different because we didn't really hear crickets. Um, cause well, we're, I think it's, it's too cold. Summer, we had yeah. two and a half feet of snow. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I, I was mm -hmm. able to convince a couple of my friends to take the day off, and I didn't get yeah. to go with all of them. Mm -hmm. But one of my friends was in Nashville. She drove up, drove up to Paducah and then went out. Oh, yeah. Because um, I was telling her, like, oh, I'm trying to avoid any major, mm -hmm. major, you know, area that that yeah. is uh, that is being advertised, mm -hmm. and so she went out a little bit to a smaller town, yeah. um, and you know people were so nice. Everybody was so exciting. They had yeah. shuttle buses, oh. and um, so she just set up a hammock in the park mm -hmm. and just hung out. Ended up meeting the aunt and uncle of one of our mm -hmm. college friends from Atlanta, who had also driven up. Oh. Driven up. And but yeah, she mm -hmm. we were just calling back and forth, mm -hmm. like just check in, like, oh, how's it going? <laughs> and she called me at about like three, three ish, three mm -hmm. o'clock or so. And she goes, oh, my God, that was amazing. Yeah. And I was like, I haven't seen it yet. And then she's yeah. like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, that's right. The whole time. Yeah. That need to be in touch yeah. with people way up down the line. Yeah. So nothing she, happened here. Yeah. <laughs> so just as our now. caller was asking, um, right it was different across the entire path yeah. of totality. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, that that's a good point. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, so many other differences. I mean, I, I talked to a lot of people that they were, I probably talked to a few hundred, there were thousands there. So a lot of them had not seen one before. And those that had seen the 2017, of course, they were thrilled to see another one. So that was good. And also right where we were, I don't know if, if you're familiar with that area in Rangeley, the Appalachian Trail crosses right over there. So I really didn't get to do any hiking. We, we weren't prepared for two feet of snow, but there were some hikers and, um, there were some snowmobilers, and there were different trailheads all the way up and down Route 17, so That's we awesome. could add that whole other yeah. feature to it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Bernie, we've got another caller. Right. Uh, hello, can you hear us? Yeah. Hello. Hello. You, you're you're yeah, on the yeah, air. Yeah. Can you introduce Thank your you. name and where you're calling from? Yeah, this is Steve from Saco. I listen to uh, Sarah and Bernie all the time. Uh, Mr. <laughs> hey. Bernie, yes. uh, i got a quick question for you. Sure. What level of mathematics is used to calculate the past? I know when I was in school, I took some calculus. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering if you could briefly explain the, the magnitude and the level of mathematics involved 
in calculating where the eclipse is going to be yeah. and, you know, how long it's going to take and how they determine the width of the path. And I'll yeah. take the answer off the air. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No, that's a good question. Very detailed technical question. So, yeah, so we're much further along in doing that now. Actually, the first person was actually Edmund Halley. Yep. He predicted a total solar eclipse path way back, like 400 Oh, uh, yeah, almost that long ago. And uh, he was only off by like 14 miles or something. So now we have satellites, we have computers. Uh, he ac- actually, they redid one of the path calculations just by, it was just off by a tiny bit even today. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you just feed all those um, uh, information into the computers and it'll come with the details because it's basically Isaac Newton's clockwork universe. Yep. And the fact that Newton and Halley way back could get within 14 miles and now hopefully we can get within like 14 millimeters. So that's what it is. It's math and numbers and data, and then it comes out perfectly when it all happens. Yeah, um, all of that is yeah. orbital physics. Orbital mechanics. And, yeah, orbital mechanics. Um, yeah. It's not much different from being able to calculate where you leave yeah. um, to get to yeah. Mars. Yeah, or I mean, else. it's almost like a three-body problem. You, yeah. you do take all the gravitational effects of the Earth, Moon, yeah. and Sun, and it'll come out accurate because we have the computers that can run a trillion calculations per second, so hopefully we're better than Edmund Halley was. <laughs> but the fact that he could do that without and only get within 14 miles. Of course, if you were at that fringe and you thought you see totality and you're 14 miles away, that wouldn't be good. Yep. But that's not the case nowadays. Yeah. So we can predict them to probably, with that accuracy, maybe about 50,000 years into the future. Yeah. Yeah, yeah um, we talked a little bit about it last time as well, mm-hmm. um, if you want to check out our last week's show. But yeah, yeah. check out um, Edmund Halley. There have been uh, a couple more astronomers after him who continued to perfect it. But he, uh, you know, in brief, he he yeah. had done the calculations and then had some citizen scientists kind of help yeah. to um, yeah. uh, improve or, or let him know how far he, off he was. Yeah. And so uh, both time and um, yeah. and distance. and. Yeah, and then the the width of of oh the, the width yeah. changes based as the moon is at perigee. Yep. So right now we're closer to perigee, so it was 115 miles. The first one was a little bit closer to apogee because it was a shorter, and it was about 75 miles. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. it does change quite a bit. Yeah, and so um, ideally, it, the one in Australia, which is about five and a half to six minutes long, yeah, will probably be a wider. That'll path that'll be as wider, well. yeah. and even the speed changes as. Remember, you're at the bottom of a shadow cone that barely reaches us to begin with. Mm-hmm. So you think you can think much more three dimensionally or even four dimensionally when you see all this. Yep. So that's why it's going to change even during the eclipse. It'll go faster or slower. It'll be a, you know the path that the shape of the shadow will change a little bit. All kinds of neat things are happening. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, in uh, yeah. please continue to give us a call two zero seven seven eight zero four nine zero nine. And uh, WMPG is proudly supported by Maine Standard Biofuels located off Riverside Drive in Portland. Since 2006, Maine Standard Biofuels has delivered carbon-reducing bio-based heating oil as a direct replacement for petroleum-based heating oil to homes in greater Portland. With no modifications required, this bioheating oil burns cleaner while warming your home. To learn more, call 207-808-3001 or visit their website at mainestandardbiofuels.com. Um, and Bernie, uh, yes. I have another question sure. from uh, on the road, which is, mm-hmm. why are we saying that an eclipse won't happen for another, like, you know, X number of years? Mm-hmm. But we had two in the last seven. Yeah. Well, actually, some places in the country had Carbondale, Illinois, was like the center point of the X, like the treasure. Of course, an eclipse is treasure and the diamond ring. I mean, these are all great analogies. So, yeah. So if you just threw a dart at the Earth, it's only once every 350 years. So you don't want to just throw a dart and, you know, never go anywhere. However, a total one happens about every year and a half. So next year there won't be any. There will be an annular and a partial, a nice total lunar eclipse on March 14th, 2025, Pi Day. Um, And if you're willing to travel, I mean, I I mentioned this last time too, there's three great eclipses coming up, 26, 27, 28. You can travel to those. Actually, uh, this country, only nine years, Alaska, I mean, you know, not to continue U.S., but you can go up to Alaska 2033 and see another total solar eclipse. So if you're willing to travel, I mean, that's that's how they happen. It's the physics. If you get the annulars, they're not as exciting because the moon's too far. But, um, yeah, every so year and beautiful. a half, basically, for yeah. a total. It's not that rare. Um, Bernie, we have another caller who yes. does not have a question about the eclipse, but mm-hmm. uh, can you hear us? Yes, yes. Awesome. Can you just introduce yourself and where yeah. you're calling from? Yes, I'm Joe. 
Joan. I'm calling from Old Orchard, and I know, Bernie, you're just a whiz about everything, but <laughs> um, <laughs> the um, explosion that happened with a star that the Hubble picked up today, have you heard about that? Well, I heard that we're supposed to see a nova sometime by September of this year. Well, it happened today, and oh. it's like unlike anything that has ever happened. I'm shocked mm. that you don't even know about it. No. They've been it's... on WMPR. I listened to that, okay. and, and it came on at about 10 o'clock this morning, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe 8 o'clock. Oh, o yeah. I haven't heard anything yet this morning. I was getting ready yeah, for this show. A big explosion. <laughs> They've never seen anything like it. Ever. But anyway, okay, so. Yeah, we'll look into that. Okay, thank you, Bernie. Bye. Okay, good, thanks. Thank yeah. you. Bye now. Awesome. Yep, you're yeah. welcome. Yeah. So I don't know if she means a supernova or there Possibly. is an, a recurring nova that we could tell with the physics that it's going to be happening again uh, sometime this year, and it would be quite a coincidence if it happened like right after the eclipse or something. But by September of this year, uh, they're, they're tracking it. They can see how it changes brightness and that type of thing. So that's a recurrent. Now, a supernova, we, I mean, we can't predict that accurately. Uh, there, of course, Betelgeuse could blow up any given time, and there's probably a few other stars, but you might need a telescope to see those. I have seen supernovae in other galaxies. With telescopes, they're pretty dramatic, but again, they're not really predictable that accurately. Awesome. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, we have another caller. Can yes. you hear us? I can hear you fine. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Um, would you please introduce yourself and where you're calling from and your question? My name is Jim, and I'm calling from Portland, and I have a question about the 2026 solar eclipse in Spain. Yeah, okay, go for as it. I, as I did a little research, mm -hmm. I discovered that it is going to be almost at sunset. Yeah. The mm -hmm. total solar eclipse will happen in some places just 45 minutes before sunset, but the, the entire eclipse cycle doesn't end until after the sunset. Mm -hmm. So how will that look? Yeah, well, right. And, I, and my friend from Dallas, Texas, was actually going to go see that. He mentioned that, too. You could, you could go to Iceland and see it earlier, so that would be before sunset. So, yeah, so as long as you get the totality part in, you're fine. You just won't see all the last phases, that last little bite of the moon. You wouldn't see that happening. Yeah. Like there's lunar eclipses, too, where the sun comes up while the, earth, the moon is still in the Earth's shadow. Yeah. So as you see, mm -hmm. it'll be lower, so it wouldn't, I mean, be very different. It's still very dramatic. It'll be Valencia, Spain, right on the uh, Mediterranean. Yeah. So it'd right. be a great spot. Right. It'd still probably be worth doing it. Yeah. You'll need to look um, just... west-ish, southwest -ish? Yeah, so it'll be lower. You want to get all the horizons and things scouted out in ahead of time, at least. Sort of looking east from Valencia. Uh, um, I, well, sunset, right? right? So Valencia's sunset. on the east coast. Uh, yeah, I haven't looked at the, I just saw where the shadow yeah. was going to pass. You would need some pretty yeah. unobstructed views, though. Like, yeah, you know, if you're low. in the middle of a city, you probably won't right, yeah, you see it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, no. Um, yeah. But I guess my, my real question was, mm -hmm. will it present as a double sunset if the total solar eclipse is 40 mm -hmm. minutes before mm -hmm. the actual sunset? How will that uh, appear? Oh, yeah, kind of, yeah. I mean, it, it would get dark, of course, the totality part. Then it'll get light again, and then the sun will set, partially <laughs> eclipse. Yeah, it could be, make some really great pictures if you had wow. the right camera equipment and do the sequences. <laughs> Instead of the sequence, you know, yeah. the, the total in the middle and then all the sides on both sides, you would have like a totally, yeah, they'd be worth doing that. That'd yeah. be insane. Yeah. 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 I'll try to go see that one. <laughs> okay. okay. Here's to insanity. Thank you uh, so much. Thanks. I appreciate Thank it. you. Yeah. Bye. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Oh, we have great questions today. Yeah, excellent yeah. question, guys. Um, yeah, I had another question from the road, Bernie. Yeah, sure. Uh, what was that red dot on the edge of the eclipse? Yeah, it's funny, too, because the guy was, one of my friends in Vermont was watching it, and people were at, around him, they thought it was a solar flare. Yeah. So I'm glad he called me right after totality and I could explain it to him. That was a prominence. Yeah. So these are always there, and if you have the right filter, you don't need an eclipse to see them, which is neat. There are certain aspects of this eclipse you can see without the moon being right there. Now, you wouldn't get the whole experience, and you wouldn't get the corona and everything else. So there's a huge bright prominence, probably 15 times the size of the Earth at about wow. 7 o'clock. There were a couple others that were a little smaller, probably one around 4 o'clock. And then there were some really big sunspots. We were watching the sun. Uh, we had guy had a big telescope or even smaller scopes, and just with white light solar filters, you could see the sunspots and all that happening. But it was a prominence, and if you look at the sun with that hydrogen alpha filter, if it looks like a filament, that's the prominence coming towards you with the sun still there. And if you see it over the limb or the edge, 
it'll be that prominence. Yeah. And they're always there. They're bigger or smaller. This was way bigger than what I saw last time. But they're always there also, But and you don't need an eclipse to see them. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, mm -hmm. this entire experience was just amazing. Yeah. I'm so happy that yeah. so many close friends of mine were able to experience yeah. it for the first time. I'm happy it was clear in Maine in general. Oh, my God. The weather, God. the huge storm before cleared everything out, the atmosphere, we, that's very unusual for early April. Everything And now, of course, we're just, right back in the rain yes. and the soup and the fog. Yep. So that's Everything where it should have been. Everything aligned for yeah, us. It had yeah. to align. So another way of looking at this whole eclipse thing, I mean, I know we've done poetry, it's like seeing deeper into the universe. Mm -hmm. So you, you get to understand all kinds of things about the sun, the moon, the earth, our platform. It's a moving platform, 18.6 miles per second. But in overall, you're seeing deeper into the universe as you see this and you just get a better understanding. Remember that corona is always there. You know, you don't need the, well, you need the, the moon in front of it to experience it, but it is always there and that's always happening. And yeah. hopefully you can see another one soon. Yeah, hopefully. Um, yeah. Yeah, Australia might be one of the better bets. Yep. Iceland is, is a possibility. And then yeah. I think Africa there's one. Africa and yeah, the pyramid, 2027, 20, yeah. August 2nd. That'll be a great yeah. one too. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I did, I didn't notice any shadowy bands. Yeah. Um, I was just, I was so excited. I yeah. mean. <laughs> like yeah, you know, I I had like a one of my friends. They kind of were in like a secluded place, mm -hmm. um, but you know, part of it is yeah. just being with yeah. a small crowd. That's just oh, yeah. everybody's so excited. Yeah. Everyone's cheering, yeah. they're clapping. I mean, I was and like, everyone was sharing. I shared tapes so people could tape solar filters oh, on. Obviously, awesome. we shared food. There was a big yeah. barbecue behind yeah. us. Yeah. And the music. I mean, that, that's all part of it. I didn't have all that last time. Yeah. We had our little select group of 20 oh, people. Yeah. And, you know, we just went out a few minutes yep. before it started. And then, <laughs> yeah, so this is way bigger. More, a whole microcosm of the world. Yeah. I mean, people from India, oh, and, you know, yeah. all over the world. Yeah. And now, Bernie, you and I are two for two. Yeah. Um, my mom was, <laughs> she is such a character. She was she she was in, in the car for most of it. And then oh, she no. came out for totality because it was cold and windy. Oh. And so, you know, but she came out for totality. And she just kept cracking jokes like, what? You guys never seen darkness before? Oh, but yeah, then, yeah. You know, she saw that first one with you. <laughs> yeah. But then when I, when I when, uh, you know, 100%, she's looking up and she's mm -hmm. just Wow, wow, yeah. wow, just oh, nonstop. Yeah. And yeah. like, you know, everybody, the way everybody was reacting, I was like dancing, mm. going crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was just mm. so exciting. And, yeah. you know, what mm. what is the difference yeah. between 99.9% yeah. and 100? Well, it's huge because the corona won't become visible at 99.9. .9. Yeah. Yeah, that's why that perfect alignment is so important. Mm. And you have to put yourself into that alignment. Yeah. As I said, every year and a half this happens. Yeah. But a lot of people, like most people I talked to, this was their first eclipse. Yeah. And at the most, second. Yeah. So it takes some effort, but oh, yeah. it's worth it. I mean, <laughs> and both of these were mm -hmm. fairly low effort compared to some other places. Well, that's true. Yeah. yeah, you didn't have to go to the South Pole. Right. and exactly. I mean, I guess Iceland or the ocean. Pretty, or, yeah, get a big cruise ship on the ocean yeah. and then all that. Or, yeah. or charter an airplane. We saw a helicopter come over just before totality. Oh, so yeah. someone chartered yeah. the helicopter. Oh, yeah, I see that. I saw that as yeah. well. There are lots of drones and in the And tons of drones, of I course. Mean, yeah. I mean, I... There were yeah. quite a few people who mm. I was just, you know, telling mm -hmm. them about this. And, yeah. you know, I've been talking about this for years yeah, to, yeah. to people around me. I yeah. made my friends sit through mm. a 30 minute eclipse <laughs> screen just to like know everything. Yeah. And still there are people going like, I had no idea yeah. it would be that different. Yeah, it and is because you, you can't describe yeah. it. Like seeing deep in the universe or understanding yeah. things you would never understand in life. You can study astronomy and physics. Or anything, music or art, your whole life, and you wouldn't understand what's really where we really yeah. are and what's happening. Yeah. The motions, the speeds, the corona. The best astrophysicists in the world don't know why the corona is two million degrees and the surface is only ten thousand. Mm. It has to do with magnetic fields, but they couldn't give you the details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two million degrees we were looking at. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was just yeah. insane, and yeah. like, there's just mm -hmm. nothing, like. Yeah. People say they've seen an eclipse. You haven't yeah. seen an eclipse. No. You saw a partial. You saw a part, exactly. And, and I think that's what's <laughs> confusing to people, too, is yeah. they're like, oh, well, I've seen an eclipse before. Yeah, of eh, you probably just saw the moon yeah. taking a bite out of the sun. Like, yeah. it's, it's not little, the same. A little bite it's is nothing. But, you know, if you, you know, I work at a hospital, so <laughs> people were saving lives. Yep. If you couldn't see 100%, 98 or whatever it was, was yeah. awesome. Right, and well. then they should make plans <laughs> for the next one. Yes. And, and then <laughs> it should be a national holiday, so you don't have to 
beg your boss and get all the time off. Yeah, but yeah. if it's a holiday, schools would be out. Some schools yeah. did let out. Yes, That's great. they did. They did. Yeah. yeah. But, um, well, thank you to all of our listeners who called in. Yeah. Really appreciate your questions. Um, I hope all of you got to experience this first or second or multiple times. Some <laughs> of uh, 1960-ish was the last 63 one. 63 July 20. Yeah. yeah. And um, in 47, 45, what's the date? Uh, 2040. For Maine? Uh, yeah. Oh, 2044. Oh, 2033 for Alaska. Okay, 2044 and 2079 in Maine. Yeah, okay. Um, Do some traveling. Yeah. (laughs) Don't wait. That's 55 years ago. Yeah, it is definitely, it is surreal. Um, But uh, thank you guys so much for listening. You have been tuning into WMPG 90.9, Scientifically Speaking, with myself and Bernie and all of our wonderful listeners. And um, stay tuned for Democracy Now! And we will see you guys next week.